Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and in part 2 of this week's update I'm going to mostly, well I'm going to start off by talking about efficiency uh, tweaks and improvements. So in the, um, we've been having a lot of problems with the uh, with the uh, UPS in this game, and the UPS in Factorio, this is essentially how many up it's updates per second. It's how how many um, how many times the game can work out what's going on in the world every second, and and, and and to keep the game flowing. Now, if you look up here in the in the top corner of the screen, you can see at the moment we're running at about 48 UPS, which it, ideally we'd be running at 60. That's actual full speed. But unfortunately, my computer is not powerful enough to uh, to run at that sort of speed and to uh, um, so it takes slightly more than a 60th of a second to work out what's going on on each update. Now we've learnt that one of the main, one of the major reasons for having these UPS problems is is, use, is, is the fact that we've used, we've massively overused warehouses uh, as, as sort of storage areas and, and balances and things like that. So if we look up here, look at this station for, as, an, as an example of the bad old way of doing things. This is set up to be uh, we've got four four warehouses across here, all of which are allowed to fill up as much as they want so you can, we can fit potentially 500 stacks of stuff into each one of these and that means each time an item goes into a warehouse the game has to go is there room in this stack no is there room in this stack no is there room in this stack no and so on all the way through until it finds somewhere to put that item and so if the warehouse is pretty full then it could have to check 500 and 500 or so slots before it actually manages to find somewhere to drop it and that takes quite a long time so if you've got a belt like this, when this was actually running, it would have been like um, like that, and then we would have been flow flowing the uh, the solid fuel into into all of these warehouses. When you've got that, you've got all of, then all of these warehouses. Every time every time one of these blocks goes in there, the game has to check to see if it's got room to, room to put it. And so this means that it's it's causing an enormous load on our computers, and therefore dragging the UPS down from the 60 where it should be down to about 52 point whatever. So, the way we're going about fixing this is we're switching our stations over to being this sort of design, where, as you can see, the most obvious thing is we've gone from four warehouses down to a single warehouse, and that means that immediately uh, quarters the amount of um, stacks that need to be searched through. And also, we've shrunk this down to only being uh, this many rows, so there's a lot fewer... So the, then, that means then the game only has to search through this many uh, this many stacks of of spaces to try and find somewhere to put the thing. Uh, this red area down here is, is is an area that's been marked as not to be used for the um, for, for the uh, system. And this is still capable of, of carrying hold, holding enough explosives for um, hopefully for at least one train. Yeah, so there's enough enough to hold, hold enough explosives to fill an entire train and then one more row besides. So in theory. There will still be enough for this train to go, and then when it comes back again, or the next train comes in, it will still be able to fill it straight back up again. And then, in that, and then while it's doing that, and while we're waiting for the other trains to come back again, we can produce more explosives to actually fill it back up again. So this is this is um, hopefully going to cause a massive increase in how well, how efficiently the game runs, and I think it's helping because we are now running at 52 UPS, whereas before we were only running at about 35. So there's been it's not just and it's not just here that's been fixed. So Tristan's been going around a lot of the areas in this big oil area. So over here as well, for example where the the sulfur is now is now a single warehouse and this is working exactly as I described earlier actually there's a there is a, a secondary warehouse over here um, which possibly needs poking in the same in the same sort of way but the theory is that the whole, that um, all of this will now be kept at, at a, sen a more sensible level um, and this will it, this will stop us hammering the uh, the UPS on in, in the air uh, quite so hard hop stop us hammering the game quite so hard the downside of all of this is it's meant quite a lot of upheaval and um, upset in the down on the, on the, on on Norvis for everything that's running. Here's more that haven't been done yet. <clears throat> it's taken, Tristan says it's taken him quite a lot longer than he was expecting. <laughs> um, so, for example, over here we've had some issues with a lack of coal and a lack of plastic due to well a lack of a lack of plastic due to the lack of coal that's due, possibly been due to fiddle, fiddling around with all of this. However, it now seems that we have a lack of coal in the mines because this train is just sitting here going well. I don't, I don't, I don't know where to go. There's no coal mine that wants me. So it looks like we have a coal supply issue, and this explains why yesterday I was talking about not having enough coal for the um, for making the the frames for my astro science, and that's because it's that is being delivered by this delivery cannon. That that may look familiar to you. Um, this is this is where the coal is coming from in order to keep this 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 system happy. And so because there's no coal here, because there's no coal coming in by by these trains, that's what's causing my problems down there. So yes, that is definitely causing some issues, um, 
but it, I, actually, having having looked at it a little more, I don't think the issue is due to the due to the warehousing system. It's due to this train not being able to find a mine, to, a coal mine to go to, presumably because they're all they're all empty or they're all being it's, it's all being used so fast that we just we just need more mines. I I, I assume. Now I, I talked about this in a previous episode where I said I, I was a little bit concerned about our coal supply and I had a bit of a look around and there are a few coal patches. There's almost a million there. There's approximately none there. <laughs> There's that's not a coal patch. I don't know. I don't know what that what that is. Oh, it's 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 um, biomatter. Okay. So yeah, there are a few. There are there are a few coal patches around, and some of them are even inside the uh, Roboport area. So we could build up a, a coal mine over here, and I think that's what we're going to need to do, and just generally get as much coal coming in as we can because it seems to be a bit of a problem at the moment. So yeah, in theory, we will eventually turn all of our stations into into single um, warehouse stations. Like this one again, especially these, all of these, all these stations. You've got a steady trickle of um, of core fragments going into the going into the station and going into the warehouses. And the warehouses have so much space; it's just a complete it's a complete waste. Now, at the very least, we could, we could do this to make to make it a little bit more efficient. As I say, there's, now there's a lot less space. At least when they're full, there's going to be, they'll they'll fill up more easily, and then there'll be a lot less space to search. So in theory, this should help. Now, what I, one thing I'm not quite sure about is whether doing this actually helps if they're not full. So, because presumably the um, the, the game will search through them in order and we'll go, aha, here is a gap. I'll put some in there. Or does it have to actually carry on searching to find out when when whether there's another one that's got some core fragments in and whether it needs to top that one up? I'm not sure exactly how it works, but there is. Yeah, we can we can make some major improvements to these to these, and and it seems to have helped already. So I'd like I'm I'm very keen on uh, on carrying on with that. Tristan is also working on switching trains over to, f from running on um, uh, what do we call it? Fuel, uh, processed fuel. This stuff to running on rocket fuel. Um, I wasn't paying enough attention during the uh, d during the uh, stream to work out exactly why he's doing that. It might be for extra speed. Uh, I'm not certain. If we get 90% acceleration and 90% top speed from that, and if we find some rocket fuel, I saw some in one of these warehouses of shame. Whereas a train that runs on rocket fuel, it doesn't say. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe the train, maybe the, but I have, I, I imagine the trains will probably be a little bit faster if they're running on rocket fuel than if they're running on unprocessed fuel. So that's presumably why he's doing it. Because having slightly faster trains would probably help with some of the congestion we've been seeing in the area around here, where nearly all the train, nearly all the trains try and travel through this 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 T junction here. So potentially having them moving a bit faster will reduce the congestion. We shall have to, we shall have to see. So yes, not a lot's been going on on Norvis, but um, that but uh, we, what what has been going on is probably is hopefully going to have big effects on our um, on our on our UPS levels. Next up is over here on Talos. So this is the planet I've been messing around on, and I've been spent I spent an, an, another week out here doing a bit of fiddling. So um, the most well, I don't know. The, the, I was going to say the most exciting thing. I, I don't know. I'm not even sure if that's true. One of the big things I've done is I've now put in a third set of beryllium processing here. So we've gone from having um, the first one is this area here which takes in the core fragments and turns them into beryllium ingots second one is here which takes in beryllium ore and turns it into ingots and the third one is down here where it takes in again so exactly the same beryllium ore and turns it into ingots because we've got a shortage of power and therefore a shortage of i don't want to put out any more uh, core miners because they're really really hungry i'll talk about power a bit more in a minute but in order to keep this sensible, um, we have got to the point now where we have enough beryllium being made. Now, part of this is because the astro science has ground to a halt because there isn't enough um, uh, coal being shipped up there. But in the meantime, we have th there we go. This this uh, warehouse, this sorry, this 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 uh, chest is very nearly full. And once that fills up, it will start backing up along this belt up here. Uh, and then eventually it'll back up to, sort of to here. This will stop, and then it, and up to here, and so on and so on. And I put in here this chest as a secondary uh, buffer, buffering chest. And this one is buffering the only buffering the beryllium that's coming out from the core fragment processing, because as I've as I've said a number of times before, core fragments are come out at a steady rate over time, but otherwise are free in a sort of weird inverted commas kind of thing. Uh, whereas these come from patches, this comes from patches where you can pull out almost as much as you want, but it will eventually run, but the patches will eventually run out. So ideally, I want to produce it from the uh, core fragments first, and then from these as a backup. So this means that now down here we've got this this buffer chest that will uh, will keep all of these guns happy and we'll make sure we've got enough coming out here to keep it keep all the guns firing and make sure everywhere has enough beryllium. Uh, and then when it backs up, when it does back up far enough, this one will fill up. And so if we get a sudden burst in requirements, we'll start to empty this one first, and we'll have a certain amount of leeway before we start actually producing it again from the ore. And that'll mean that all of the mines down in the in the mining areas can go to sleep, and we'll only start and we'll and we'll use essentially we'll use the beryllium taken from the cheap. Uh, supplies first and I think that's that's very worth doing unfortunately as part of this expansion down here well <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say really so I 
the the system produces produ both produces and uses sand in a slightly sl slightly old ratios and i'm not 100 percent sure what the ratio is um so we've got these machines up here they the pulverizers will produce uh they produce the, the beryllium that we're co the barrel that we're processing and they produce this and they produce some stone great down here we crush it again and it here and we turn the barrel into uh, beryllium sulfate and a bit of sand so the sand then gets filtered out down here and the, the stone gets passed down and passed back up again along here where it gets pulverized and turned into more sand and then some of the sand gets used along here to be made into uh, as part of the making the ingots so I thought, great, this is this is fine. We're producing loads and loads of sand from these this pro this processing up here, uh, and then we're going to use a little bit of it to make these ingots, and that was absolutely fine. So we had an overflow that's coming down here, being turned into glass and shipped off to Norvis uh, to and to, to be to be disposed of because we had an excess of it. Fine. Then I had a bit of a crisis of supply up here for. Oh yeah, it was because I programmed a station wrongly. We had a complete crisis of supply of the uh, of the core chunks, so we were only making the beryllium from ore, and it turns out if you make it from ore, it takes more sand than it produces. So at that point, I went, oh no, I, and then I, I asked um, Mark to start supplying me with sand to my delivery cannon chest here, which he, fortunately, conveniently, he never actually got round to doing, because then once this kicked back in again, suddenly I had an excess of it again, and I was going, oh for goodness sake, what's going on here? So now I have this ridiculous system where there is a belt that comes down here carrying the sand, um, and then in order to keep to ensure it doesn't it keeps flowing and these belt this belt can flow and you can see I say that it's not even working it then flows down here and then is, is passed back up here again and passed through here. And this, this is all just nonsense I need, I need to redesign this in a way that isn't completely stupid um, which would probably be one one belt to take the sand away to put it into a storage place up here and then another one that'll output it down pass it down here and then output it down to the disposal areas if we've got too much of it it's not it's not difficult I just haven't made a sensible system yet and it's it's just stupid and i'm embarrassed about it and I, which is why i'm showing it to you <laughs> yeah so that's 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 horrible I'm, I'm definitely going to be fixing that but this does mean that now with all of the with these three systems here as long as everything is working properly and we have a good supply of all of the resources coming in we should be capable of producing at about 130 uh, ingots per minute which is a lot and i'm hoping that's going to be suitably future proof now you can see along here this is starting to back up fairly quickly so eventually these machines will stop working and that's probably a good thing because we're actually we're actually very very short on cryonite and that is now the limiting factor here so that, that and the sand the sand nonsense that I was talking about earlier um, because yeah there is there we've basically we've grow our system has grow, our factory in general has grown now to the point where we're trying to use the cryonite faster than the uh, than the system that Tristan set up on Drakit was capable of producing it at so it's probably going to be either it's going to be time to either go out to Drakit and start mining it oh he has already started mining it so we just we just straight straight up can't keep up with the uh, with the demand in the, in the processing over here so we either need to put in more processing which he's tried to do but we obviously need to send out another rocket with a load more supplies for that or go off to snowdrop and set up a much bigger cryonite processing facility out there in basically the same way that i set up a very large um uh, vulcanite processing facility on uh, on agnea to, to, to supplement the one that was on taishakuta so yeah um Something needs to be done about the cryonite, but that's just an, an, yeah, it's another thing to go on the to-do list. Back over here on Talos, because this is where things have actually been happening. Um, I, t I was talking last week about how I wanted to get rid of this, um, this free power system, because I believe that's also going to be causing havoc with our UPS. Uh, so, I built a, um, a small solar array down here of a mere, um, I don't know, a mere... 1800 or so uh, solar panels flat big of the flat solar panels the bigger ones the ones that we can we can currently make um, and that is now capable that is capable of producing sl about about half of the amount of power that we require a bit more than half actually um, a bit more than half the power we require so that's great except um, I'm cheating at the moment I've got always day turned on because it makes better videos but as you can see over here during the night that obviously drops down to zero and we've got a completely flat top on the gas power station there where it produces 567 megawatts and you'll notice over here that 567 is less than 700 and that means every night we have a power crisis on this planet so that's um, not ideal my original plan over here oh well, yeah I need to fix this that. My original plan over here was to set up a steam battery like like this like these ones the sort that we use for the umbrella defences um, and have that basically have these have the solar generating power out during the day have the steam batteries ch ch charging up and maintain and then maintaining the power overnight um, and therefore keeping the system keeping the system running off off those two because accumulators are a bit of a nonsense because they're such a headache to produce enough of uh, great except that 
1800 of these is producing about it's producing slightly more than half the power the base needs at the moment um, <clears throat> and if we if we want to run it overnight as well well it's not quite double that because you, you get more than you, you have power for more than half the time with solar panels um, but we we'd need we need to tide the system over for this much so we'd need all we probably need to triple this and I'm already on 1800 solar panels putting out another 4,000 seems Seems excessive. Now, I mean, I can fit them in. There is a huge amount of space on this planet, uh, so I can do that. But it's going to be a bit expensive and rather a lot of... and require an enormous quantity of, well, everything. The other thing is that um, the other thing that I've, I did as part of this was I put in, I extended this wall down here like that because I wanted to uh, make sure the biters didn't come over and bite on the uh, on the solar panels. I've only actually defended it from one direction. Um, what I probably should do is put another wall across here and maybe here and then across here and then just claim this entire area but the thing is though i quite liked the outposting system i had set up before where i have all these little outposts out here and because they're all reasonably self-cleaning for the uh, on the pollution front i say reasonably because apparently they're not i thought i thought okay i did go in and i put in some extra um filters oh we've run out of filters down here that's why this is now getting quite so dirty okay i will need to investigate why there are no air filters making it down here now i think i know why it's Oh, it's because this is broke, spectacularly broken. What's going on here? Ah. The, uh, oh, I see what the problem is. It's because this isn't connected to that. No, that. Ah, get it right. That connects to that. There we go. So what's been happening is this train has endlessly been coming out here, trying to unload its filters here. It's not been able to, uh, and it's caused a massive backlog from everything not being able to run properly. So if I do that, give it a little bit more space to, to unload into, it'll then be able to pick up all of these dirty filters that have been piling up here. It'll then... I mean, I don't care quite so much about picking up all of the, uh, the clean ones, actually, because the system will run okay as is, as long as we pull the dirty ones off it. Uh, so that's going to basically be okay. We've got enough in here now, so this will have stopped requesting more, um, uh, more, uh, more trains to come out here. And that means that train will start to be able to go out and drop off filters in other places. But this means... So what, what happened here is because, this was, because the train kept coming here because it thought there weren't any filters here, uh, that meant it wasn't able to go anywhere else, and so it was causing all kinds of havoc. Um... And also, we weren't able. To, we also completely filled this up with filters, and that caused this to jam. So that's caused, yeah, that's caused 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 some problems. But now I think I think this is probably sorted. Um, we may get a little bit of jam from the, uh, the from the dirty filters running around here, and this being completely full of clean ones. But eventually, this will sort itself out and probably start working again. Um, part of me is tempted to. Uh, I can't. I say one way to be, perhaps better way to fix this would be to tell this one to only do the um, only do the, the 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 dirty filters, but that would mean that in the long run we would always have an absolute solid belt of filters around here, which isn't what we want. So as as is, we will eventually dirty all of these filters up and send them back to be replaced. Um, but in the meantime, we might have a little bit of an overload, so I might need to tweak this a little bit and maybe give it a little bit more uh, a little bit more space, a little bit more space in here like that. So another thing you might notice, again, it depends on how much attention you've been paying in the previous episodes, is I've been going in and doing the um, the warehouse efficiency things on this planet as well. So that was my one of my other projects. Not only did I go in and um, uh, up upgrade the uh, the amount of beryllium we're producing, I also came around here and in the interest of efficiency, I've now swapped all of these over so that now, we, as you can see, we've got a, a warehouse with a relatively small amount of space in it that will fill up with beryllium, sorry, fill up with beryl from this mine reasonably soon uh, as you can see we're it's, it's, it's quite close to filling up now uh, and there is now only one warehouse here instead of the two I had before and so with the magic of, of loaders we can still load reasonably quickly from one warehouse into two wagons uh, there we go it's filled up now so we'll now start to back up down here and the other advantage of this is this means when this when this does back up all the way down here all these mining drills will stop stop running so as so this one you can see is using um, 125 kilowatts this one is using well, it's a max consumption of 125 kilowatts. I don't know what he's actually using right now, but in theory, the amount of power being used should drop off quite severely as the as the drills cut out and are no longer needed because the warehouse is filled up, and that will help with the with the saving on the uh, on, on the amount of power we're using, which would be nice. I've also done the same sort of efficiency uh, improvements down on all of the um, all of the all of the core core fragment stations. So again, we've got you can see exactly the same sort of design down here. Now, in theory, it shouldn't ever get to the point where this station is full because a train should come out and grab them. Um, the station is now probably active. 
Uh, no, it's not active yet. We haven't, we haven't quite got to 2,000. Now we roughly have, but we've run out of... Oh, it doesn't have any electricity, but that's okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got about 2,000 in there. This should, this should trip any moment now then and become active. Um, it's a 2,000 has a little bit of a rounding on it. So this is waiting for exactly 2,000. This is saying approximately 2,000. Oh, no, oh, actually, hang on. Why are you inactive still? You're not inactive. Here is the train. It was purple because there was a train already coming here. Okay, that's that's fine then. So that, that arrives here. We now dump dump from this warehouse into the train. It goes pretty quickly because we've got three sets of loaders going. Uh, the train will fill up and it'll take it'll take take the or, 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 uh, the core chunks away. So yes, this is all working pretty well. Uh, ah, there we go. The um, the filter train. That's that one. The short one has now just been over here. So now we do once again. We have at least some filters here. And there's not a lot of them. They're going out, they're being fed out fairly quickly, but at least this means we can now start dealing with that pollution, and hopefully that'll mean we won't get too many more attacks. Um, hopefully. Now looking around here, it looks like most of these filters are actually still working, and they've got a few left in them. So I don't know why it's quite so polluted around here. Um, maybe it is simply that we're producing it faster than the filters can deal with it. I don't know. We might have to have a look, bit more of a look into that, because I would like to... Um, Whilst all of these outposts are defended by laser turrets, I would prefer to I would prefer not to have too many attacks coming in and uh, attacking them due to the pollution, um, because it just means the more pollution you have, the more the more attacks you have, the harder it's going to have to work, and the more chance there are is of um, of the uh, biters getting through and doing some damage, uh, like they've done down here. So yeah, some fiddling going to be required there, I think. As part of my expansion down here with the solar and uh, and the ex and the ex and putting in an extra mine over here as well, um, I had to kill off quite a lot of biters. Um, and there was some there was some successes and some failures there. The nuclear artillery is great for clearing out the nests, as we saw. It's not so great against the worms or the um, or the individual large, but particularly the la very large biters themselves, um, as we see down here. The, the, these, well, not so much. Yeah, these guys have just have far too much health for for, for my uh, my own sanity. If we drop one of these on them, you'll see it'll take out it'll take out the nests easily. It'll take out probably some at least some of the biters, but it won't take out it mo won't take out most of the worms. And I reckon these uh, spitters are probably going to survive as well. So we'll find we'll find out in a second. Boom. Yeah, so there you go. We took these guys down to about 50% health. These these as well. Um, it's just not as effective as I would like it to be. So I went in there and I started trying to do some um, tid a bit of tidying up. But I didn't really have any suitable weapons for it. So if we have, have a look at my, my, my weapon inventory down here. I've got the bloat burst gun or the bio gun. Uh, I've got a submachine gun, which is I actually picked up to a, late, a bit later on. And it's probably the least rubbish. And I've got the Tesla gun. So the bio gun is, is great on big clumps of, of uh, relatively weak biters because you tend to get a sort of a chain a chain effect, a chain chain reaction running between them, killing lots and lots of them off. Uh, the Tesla gun is good against against probably nests. You can fire it into a sort of a, it'll it'll zap around between lots of nests and worms and things and maybe do a fair amount of damage like that. But against individual biters or individual worms, it's pretty pathetic. Submachine gun, kind of okay, not brilliant. Uh, I don't know. I also have the heavy rocket launcher and some ato atomic bombs. They have the same problem as the atomic artillery, where they just don't really do enough enough individual damage to take out a, a, a behemoth biter. Also got an anti-materiel rifle. That is great, but I don't have any ammunition for it, so that's not so great. If I send out another rocket out here, I'll probably I'll try and remember to bring some ammunition out. But to be honest, this area is kind of mostly probably finished. I hope we shall see how that goes. Um, so yeah, the the uh, the end end result of that was I ended up using the bio gun quite a lot because it was the it seemed to be the most effective because you drop down a puddle of poison gas over a load of over a worm and it eventually will probably die. <clears throat> but in the process of using that, I managed to fly through the goop once and die to and get and got killed by it. And another time, I flew I got too close to a nest, got shot, got bitten out of the sky, and then due to due to I think lag that or at least I'm blaming lag or unresponsive controls there because. Um, uh, because I'm pretty, I was hammering on the J key to try and get my character to jump back up into the air on jetpack, and it just wasn't working. So I got a little bit salty about that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, that meant I had some. I, 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 I died, died again. So we've got a couple of deaths to report on at the end of the end, end of the episode. That covers the things I've been doing out here on Talos, I believe. Uh, on down over on Njord, Tristan's been doing a bit of fiddling with the uh, the design over here because, as you saw, we, we now don't have enough holmium as we saw yesterday when we were looking at the energy science uh, research. It's not being pu pulled in fast enough there. Um, he's got some problems down in this area, I believe. Yes, if we, if we look here, there is a massive shortage of powder or whatever it is coming around the belts over here, and there is a huge amount of crushed over here that's not being used. From what I gather. The problem 
Well, actually, the problem is, is, is actually down. It looks like it's, we don't have enough of the anion exchange beads coming through here. And that, I imagine, is going to be due to a shortage of cryonite. Oh, here, here comes some. So we've had a little, presumably had a little bit of cryonite come in. And so we've been able to make a few of the beads. And that's a, that is at least a start. They do, they do take, yeah, they take cryonite. And that's the problem along here. So, but yeah, these will then flow in here, and they're not getting passed out in the right in the right proportions over here. So, some extra work is going to be required on all of these de on on the uh, on the designs being used here in order to get the, the systems flowing a bit more reliably, should we say? And I th I believe the problem is is here, where you've got both the cryonite beads and the an sorry the anion exchange beads and the um and and the crushed on uh, both on the same side of the belt. So you get over here we've got just crushed, and this is not getting in any in, in enough extra beads, so it's it's having issues. So what Tristan's tried to do here is split them out so they're going onto opposite sides of the belt, and I believe that has helped a bit, and so th that's why this one seems to be running. Uh, in fact, some of these do. He's fixed. He's fixed some of these, but at the moment there's just a serious, serious shortage of the beads. So a bit more replay, a bit more um, rep repair and improvement is going to be required along here, but also a lot more cryonite is going to be required in order to get all the beads flowing, and then hopefully bring the whole system up to uh, to working nicely. Finally, let's go over and have a look at Taras, where uh, Mark has now finished off the um, the imosite processing. So as you can see over here, we have a flow of imosite coming through to lots and lots and lots of delivery cannons. Um, I imagine they're all just wait basically waiting for their dishes to be put in and to be told where they're supposed to be delivering to. Uh, there's some cannons down here that's getting rid of glass because he's got a lot of sand coming out as a byproduct. Um, I imagine he's got an enormous amount of, of uh, sulfur coming out as a byproduct as well, but I don't know what he's done with that yet. We'll find out in a minute. So, um... Oh, that's very polluting. Right, so this is working essentially as I as I talked about last time. We've got a uh, a mine up here that's digging up the emersite. We've got some core mines down here that are producing emersite cores. Quite a few of them actually. And he's done the he's done the ludicrously long belts system for um for bring, bringing the resources in. Sure, fine, whatever. Um, Mark apparently doesn't like trains very much. So yes, bringing all of that in up here, where it's as 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 with the wall, as 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 before, you can see it's being crushed down into the emersite ore and byproducts that then gets processed into the imosite powder and more byproducts by which I mean sand <clears throat> we then can turn that into um, apparently into silica oh quartz and glass I, I'm not quite sure what's going oh, to turning into silica let's let's look at one, one of these machines so we're turning into okay you need silicon for this process I'd, I'd forgotten about that so that's coming through here and producing lots and lots of the crystals and also quite a lot of the plates, which we're uh, we're not using yet. They're going to, to a, a belt to nowhere, but I assume we're just going to get another row of guns in across here that are going to um, take those away when, when they're required. Uh, we don't have any delivery cannon capsules coming out at the moment, and that's because there was a problem with the, uh, with the delivery cannon system here. It was just... Uh, pummeling there. Uh, it wasn't stopping firing when it should, so I've had to disable it manually for now. Uh, once once normal service has been resumed and we have enough power, over, oh, we do have enough power right now. Once normal service has been resumed here, we can start producing delivery cannon capsules and get those firing. I'm not sure what else there is to say about this. Let's let's find oh, let's find out where the sulfur is going because I'm kind of curious about that. So some of it is going in here to make the acid to make the um to make the whatever this is the immersium sulfide. Fine. The rest of it's coming down all the way down here. Presumably to more delivery cannons. Yeah, there's an, another bank of delivery cannons down here for sending the, sending the sulfur off to places where it's needed. Presumably, oh, it's, it's all going to all going to Norvis at the moment. We should probably have that being set sent to Agnea. Really, we should set, set we should we should modify that one. Uh, and as usual, all the other miscellaneous bits and pieces. So we've got barrels of um, uh, barrels of pyroflux being disposed of here, and the uh, and eventually, I would say the we would be getting rid of the uraniums from here as well. But actually, no, we're going to be taking those over here to make them into power because that's a much more valuable uh, use for uranium than just sending it off planet. I'm sure Mark has been doing lots of other things on this planet because that feels like not enough stuff for me to have talked about. I've only been talking for a couple of minutes about it. But all he said in his notes is that he finished Taras. Um, so I'm going to guess that he's probably put in some extra mines um, in order to get get more throughput. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to get this up and running at a decent speed and, and, and keeping everybody very happy. So brings us to the end. That brings us to the end of the episode, where we can have a look at the uh, the death counter. As I said, I had some unfortunate moments, so there's been a couple of extra deaths for me. Uh, I'm still in third place on the death counter, but if I carry on at this rate, um, I might be I might be I might catch up with Mark fairly soon if I'm unlucky. I think I need to go back to Norbit because it's safe there. <laughs> um, my deaths in the previous uh, run, as one one counter one, one was uh, one was to biters because they uh, they bit me out of the sky and then um, and then ate me to death. <laughs> and the second one, Tristan's phrase has stood in his own. Good. It was a biogun death because I, yeah, I stood in the in the, in the gunk that comes out of the biogun and, uh, and and died from that. So that was unfortunate. 
Ah well. Still, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the uh, the episode and um, and laughing at my misfortune and and some of the design choices I've made. <laughs> Please come back on Monday when we should be carrying on and trying to fix all the problems we've been talking about and just generally make things work a bit better, a bit more efficiently, and get some more science done. So things are go- things are going well. Come back on Wednesday when I shall be uh, carrying on with the XCOM project and expanding my uh, uh, just trying to trying to get more more and more psionically gifted soldiers and see see if that gives us me gives me the edge against the aliens that I um, so desperately need at the moment. Tuesday there will be a, a video coming out that talks through what I think you should take to space on your first trip out on your first uh, when the first time you leave Norvis when you when you're uh, quite early on in this game so if you're if you're fairly new to space exploration or you'd like to or you're getting back to that point again and you'd like some uh, suggestions please check that one out um, and then we'll be back with the uh, catch up videos on Friday and Saturday of next week as well of course. So, thank you for checking out the video. Uh, please look at, have, a, have a look at the uh, stream sponsor. That's uh, trefoil.be. If you use the code LawrenceBlaze on checkout, you can get 20% off your uh, first month with of, of, uh, of, a, of a Factorio or a Minecraft or various other game servers hosting. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.